The narrative of Manchester's post-punk musical history may be dominated by the Hacienda, but to regular gig-goers in the mid to late 80s, the two international venues were also key. There's never seemed to be a week where I wasn't in either of them, virtually every single night. Tonight's trip is the International One, the venue where it's run by Gareth Evans, the Stone Roses manager, who would stand on the door refusing entry to anybody who was pompous enough to think they would just be able to walk in the place, but embraced and looked after local musicians at the time. The venue itself is now a Turkish supermarket. I've seen some incredible gigs there. I'll be talking about them in this little video clip. This is John Robb here. Another stop on my whistle stop tour, jogging around the city, looking at points of Manchester culture from way, way back. You may say, why is John Robb standing outside the Venus Food Superstore? It's a fine store, selling lots of great fruit and veg, Turkish food, but way back in the day, in the 80s, this was the International One. Seen a many, many classic gigs. The front door of the venue was just here, and just beside the door was the Stone Roses manager, Gareth Evans, who'd be lurking there. I remember the night the Stone Roses single was about a month before it came out, and I went down there and he took me to the office and handed me this single, the Pride. I wonder what happened to him later on. It didn't really work out well. This is also the point, the place where the Stone Roses went to meet Gareth, the famous meeting when they went to his office. And they went to another office on the call, but they met him here. The, the uh, meeting where he showed him the bars of gold bullion and dropped his pants to show him the underpants that he sold to make his money. A bit of a character. This is the international one. I've seen many a classic gig here. I remember when Nirvana were playing with Tad. It's about 40 people. And they're meant to be staying around our house because we'd already stayed in New York about a year before. Something saying to all those never ending tours. On this um, night, Nirvana still weren't really that known. They played here and the stage was in the far corner where the cheese counter is now. I will go in but I don't fancy taking a chance of catching any bugs because I hear there's a little bug going round. Now what we're going to do is going to walk around the side to see the door where we went in and out and carried the gear because I know where it was because I played here a few times myself for the membranes with my blue valentine supporting us. This here is the door at the back of the Venus Superstore. in and out to the venue. The stage was just about here on the other side of the door which is now a cheese counter. At this very spot here I remember having a conversation with Tad and Nirvana, pre fame Nirvana. I had a little chat with Kurt Cobain. They were weary from touring all the bands so they decided not to stay at our house down the road about two miles away in Disney where Dinosaur Jr. recorded the freak scene video which I'll make that to another episode at some point. They were actually got a small motel which is such a luxury when you're old and when you're touring. So this is where you would be looking your arms in right let's get the fucking ampy. Where's the singer gone? No one carries any gear, why am I doing it all? So this was 